to your favor. Just lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. I want to hear the church, the church praying. I want to hear the church praying. You want to lift up your voice and say, thank you, Father, for that waiting. Thank you for that presence. Thank you for that power. We give you praise, Father, for what you have done. We bless you for your faithfulness. Indeed, it's not by mind. It's not by power. It is by your mercies, Lord. Thank you that I know I prayed and you have answered my prayer. I have that faith that you have heard my cry. Thank you, Father. I bless you, Jesus. I give you all the glory. I give you all the adoration. Magnify you. I glorify you. Man Shobalagades. You want to pray one more time and say, Lord, every single prayer I prayed during this fast, I declare, let the manifestation be seen. May I see the manifestation. Open your mouth, pray. Pray that the Lord will show you the manifestation. Pray that you will testify to the goodness of God. Pray that you will testify to the glory of God. They lose. Pray that you see the manifestation. Thank you, Jesus. I want to hear the church pray. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Mashabalagada. We give you glory. We give you praise. Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you for victory. We thank you that in this month we encounter victory. We encounter your goodness. We encounter your mercies. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Somebody put your hands together and take your seat. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for coming. This morning, I want to share with you a message I've entitled, You Are Set for a Miracle. You are set for a miracle. Tell somebody you are set for a miracle. I can't hear you. Tell somebody you are set for a miracle. Now maybe you yourself, you don't believe it because maybe you didn't fast, you didn't pray, you don't know, you were not in great hours, you didn't join in a way. But if, if you did join, con connect to the corporate anointing. Amen? So look at somebody and tell the person whether the devil like it or yes, you are set for a miracle. I didn't say no, whether the devil like it or yes, because he has no choice. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Isaiah 40, the verse 31, is, is a very popular scripture. A very, a very, I mean, simple, let me put it that way, a scripture we are all familiar with. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Somebody say, shall renew their strength. But they that wait upon the Lord, King James said, I read from the New Living Translation, but King James said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This is my message this morning. Whether you fasted or not, so far as you are under the sound of my voice, so far as you are an ICGC member, we join faith with our father, Dr. Otabel, and with the oil that was released throughout the 40 days of fasting and prayer. And we decree and declare upon your life, you will receive new strength. I said you will receive new strength. I don't like this sound. I said you will receive new strength. Uh -uh. Whether you are guilty of something you did yesterday. And for that matter you cannot respond. The corporate anointing is at work this morning. Where are my instrumentalists? I speak over your head. I speak over your life. That they that wait upon the Lord. Shall receive new strength. Therefore. If you waited. If you prayed. If you fasted. May God give you new strength in the name of Jesus. May God give you new financial strength in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you new strength in every aspect of your life. New strength. Somebody say new strength. strength. They that wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord. Give me the King James again. And let it be there. But they that wait upon the Lord. Now, when the Bible talks about waiting... This kind of waiting is not the waiting you know. Biblical waiting has to do with total dependency on God. Biblical waiting has to do with a spiritual exercise where you allow the flesh to be subjected and for the spirit of God to take charge. When do we wait? We wait when we are trusting God for a supernatural release that the harm of flesh cannot give that result. And for 40 days we have been waiting, we have been praying, we have been trusting God. And the last night as our father spoke that now you are released for a blessing. I came this morning to affirm or confirm and I came this morning to also speak the same word to you. Because you have waited. Because you have waited. You didn't depend on your own will. You didn't depend on your own strength. But you have waited and you are trusting God for that miracle. May God give you strength for that miracle. I am here to declare upon your life. After a long wait of fasting. When you have no eating. When you see food, you know you are ready for it. Am I talking to somebody here? Why do we wait? I will take you through the word. Waiting is not for carnal man. Waiting is not for carnal man. Biblical waiting is not a passive activity, but a demonstration of active dependence upon the obedience and obedience of God. You depend on God and you obey God. Waiting on the God of God, on, on waiting on the Lord, it is not. A friend call you and say, wait for me at this junction and I am coming. Waiting on God is when you deny the flesh and you take a move. It is not a passive thing. It's an active thing. Where you deny the flesh, where you separate yourself from your family, where you separate your friend from loved ones and friends and you are depending solely on God for the new dimension you are trusting him for. Ah, I came to tell somebody. I don't know what you are trusting God for. I don't know what you waited for. But whatever you waited for, whatever you are trusting God for, 
let God meet you at the point of that need. Waiting on God is the denier of the flesh. Listen to me. I will give you some few ways or some few ways or some form of waiting on God. But before I get there, I want you to know when God told Abraham, leave your home, leave your family, leave your mother, leave your, fa your, fa your family, leave everything and go to the place I will show you. This guy doesn't know where God is taking him or what God will show him. But because of obedience to what God said and he moved today, is the father of many nations. On other days, those who came to teaching service, last series I teach, uh, you know, last series I handled on the, on, uh, uh, on uh, what do you call it? Uh, pray, not the curse on, on the worship contemporary way of worship I told you that worshiping God is total obedience for somebody to hear the voice of God to leave his father, leave the business he's doing, it's a form of waiting I'm asking you somebody here so if you have not done anything even if you were walking in the flow, you didn't fast you ate throughout the fasting but you were in, under the ocean and you at least uh, joined in the prayer and whatever, whatever. You even do one day. I am here to tell you for the fact that the family around you waited to, I mean, on God. And they waited for a divine direction to their next move or their next level. That oil will automatically rub on you. Waiting on God is not fufu and banku. Waiting on God is not talking to people about where you want to go. Waiting on God is total dependency on God. If somebody depended on God for 40 days, I tell you, result is about to so far. I will not force you to say amen, but if you say amen, it means it shall be well with me. Amen. Waiting on God is a spiritual discipline. Waiting on God is when your spirit man is calling that deny the flesh. And follow God's will. Waiting on God. It's a spiritual discipline. Where you deny the flesh. And food is going around. But you just say no. I want to hear from God. From a next level of life. What separated Cain from Abel. Is Abel's audacity. Or Abel's grace. Or Abel's anointing to hear from God. And present the right sacrifice. Hearing from God and obeying God. Is, is, is a form. Of waiting because if you, if you don't wait on God, you cannot hear God's voice. We have prayed, we have fasted. It is not even easy to do three days. Some people struggle to even do two days fasting. It's a spiritual act, action, it's a spiritual activity where you want to hear God. God, what are you saying? God, what do you want me to do? And if you are not disciplined spiritually. You cannot do it. Many people who trusted God had to depend on God by separating themselves and denying the flesh so that their spirit man can increase. Am I speaking to somebody here? And if I have any advice for you, since waiting on God is a spiritual activity or it's a spiritual practice, I will encourage you don't wait until 40 days come next year. I will encourage you to learn to separate yourself unto God. Because when you separate yourself unto God, what happens is that God always shows forth for the next step, for the next direction. Hallelujah. Let me give you some few biblical ways. When we talk about waiting on God, the forms it can take. Number one, waiting on God is Acknowledging God's sovereign control of all things pertaining to your life. Whilst we are praying, some of us are trusting God that God, this is what I want to see in my life. God, I want to love you more. God, I want to see your glory more. God, I want to encounter you in this form, in this way. And whilst you were, you were, you were saying those things in your prayer, what it means that you acknowledge God as the as the final say and you acknowledge God as the only source of your breakthrough that is a form of waiting on God waiting on God is not only that but waiting on God is when you consider 
that without him you are nothing waiting on God is when you consider that without him you are nothing. Look at what Ecclesiastes 7 verse 13 to 14 says. It said, consider the words of God who can make straight what has made crooked. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. And in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other so that man may not find out anything that will be after him. Now God makes the way crooked. He can make the way straight. But why do you fast? You depend totally on his direction. So that your path that is made crooked can be made straight. Am I speaking to somebody? And because you are fasted and prayed. May your path be made straight for you. When you pray more than your members. That's what happened. <laughs> can I speak to somebody here? May God make your straight path. Your, your path straight. May God make your path straight. If you, if you wait on God, it means total dependency on God. You acknowledge that without Him, you cannot move forward. Without Him, you cannot make impact. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that He is the one that made the crooked way straight. And the straight path crooked. He can do anything at all. But why do you fast and pray? You pray so that things that are not being made clear to you your tomorrow will be made clearer to you and i'm here to tell somebody because you pray because you fasted may god sort your path straight may you see what is ahead of you may you feel that when god is saying for your tomorrow i came to tell somebody your tomorrow will be better financial strength, new business strength, new marital strength, strength in every aspect of your life. Wherever you need strength, and please when I talk about strength, it's not macho strength, it's not macho. What I talk about strength, there are areas in your life that you know you need help. And friends have come around, family members have come around, but they, they don't seem to give you the solution you are looking for. The solution lies in God. And that solution can only be realized when you have waited on God. That is why I came with strength and power that so far as you have waited on God, may any new idea, may any new grace, any new dimensions that you are expecting for your job, for your work, for your business, and for your marriage, the direction you are lacking to make your marriage better, the direction which is the strength you are lacking to make your business better, may you receive that strength in the name of Jesus. Your heaven is looking for my trouble. May God give you new strength. That task ahead of you. That task ahead of you. May God give you strength for it. The strength I'm talking about is not only physical strength, but spiritual strength to do new things. There are find the ideas you have, but you don't know how to implement those ideas. There are, there are decisions you want to take, but you don't know how to take those decisions. That is what I'm talking about right here. The decision that you can take and you can see impact, you can see, you can see the decision you've taken, making impact, that is what I'm talking about. Many of you have been working in some companies for so many years, no improvement, no increased salary, no pro progress, no promotion, nothing. And you are asking God questions. God, why me? Instead of asking God questions, that is why I say this, put these 40 things together. So that when you wait on God and you depend totally on Him, your flesh will give you wrong physical thinking. Cannot mind, cannot thinking. It's subjected. When you wait on God, His strength comes to you and He gives you idea. He tells you with what step to take. And by the time you take those steps, those steps will lead you to our next level, to your next level. That is why I came this morning. And I'm not, I'm not here to preach any strange message. I am here to affirm what our Father said. That you are sent for a miracle. Because you have waited on God. New strength is being released to you. Strength in your marriage. Strength in every aspect of your life. And that is what I am telling this morning. That strength is coming to you. Where you have failed, you will not fail again. Where you have been dropped, you will not drop again. Where you couldn't do what you supposed
supposed to go. New strength has been given to you. I see you advancing. I see you advancing. I see you advancing. You are set for that miracle. You are set for that breakthrough. Because you have waited upon the Lord. For them that wait upon the Lord shall renew that strength. May you receive renewed strength. Renew strength. Oh, come on. Let me tell you what renewed strength is about. Have you seen in life people are rash and they go ahead of you and it looks like they are winning it looks like they are succeeding it looks like everything they are doing and people are asking you ah but you started you were in class with this same boy how come he has gone ahead of you you are in school with this same man how come he is ahead of you everything around you seems not to be working why because we are depending on your carnal knowledge why because we are de depending on your own strategies but if you wait on God new divine ideas is given if you wait on God the Bible says the other day, after the prophet of God has taught the Ethiopian eunuch and has led him to Christ, the Bible says the rain began to fall. And the man said, Join me in my chariot. But the prophet said, I don't need you to, I don't need to sit in your chariot. In other words, I don't depend on carnal knowledge. I don't depend on, on speed that has been created by man. I don't depend on horses and chariot. I depend on the strength of the law. And the Bible says the ocean of the Lord came upon the prophet by the time the Ethiopian you know, arrived at his residential area or his destination the prophet was already there that is what I'm talking about who am I talking to if you are the one who receives divine strength receive an ocean to transcend receive grace to move forward by the time those who think they have gone ahead who see you you are already in your destination shall yes shall yes Listen to me, look at someone and say, baby, say, brother, sister, don't worry. You are about to set forth because you are set for a miracle. Tell him, brother, sister, if it's your girlfriend, boyfriend, darling, tell him, baby, baby, I want you to know. Tell the person, baby, I want you to know. Don't worry for those who have gone ahead. I tell you, you are about to receive divine speed. A speed you have never encountered before. God is about to catapult you to the next level. The reason being that you have waited upon the Lord. I activate scripture on you. I activate speech of scripture on you. I activate the word of God in motion in your life, in your life. That they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Because you have waited. Because you have prayed. Because you have waited. Because you have prayed. God is coming through for you. Now can I prophesy to somebody? I am not prophesying to everybody. But I am prophesying to the one that believe my prophecy. I speak over your head. And let the ocean of God. That a new chapter has been opened in your life. I said a new chapter has been opened in your life. It is time for a miracle. You are set for that breakthrough. The devil is a liar. He cannot do anything about that miracle. That miracle is yours. That breakthrough is yours. That glory is yours. I feel something in this house. May God give you that which you need. This month is a victorious month. You will come here celebrating. You will come here celebrating. You will celebrate the God of heaven. The one who gives you victory. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I give you double for your trouble. I stand against the strength of souls. I stand against my father's anointing. The tower of heaven's anointing. I stand against the oil God has given me. And I prophesy under this ocean. I prophesy under power. I prophesy. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. Enter that gate. I see a gate ahead of you. Enter that gate. It's your next level. Somebody shout my next level. Next week I'll do point one point two. So those who are waiting for point one point two, meet me next week. I came to prophesy today. I came to affirm that which has been declared on your head in greater ways. If you didn't watch, go back and watch the day. But I speak over your head. It is your set time of miracle. I said it is your set time for a miracle.
it is your set time for a miracle. God will come through for you. Sit down. Hallelujah. Number one, waiting on God means acknowledging to total dependence on his instructions. You don't follow your own instructions. Many of us are suffering because you think you have wisdom. Many of us are suffering because you think you are smarter than God. That's why you are suffering. But learn today that even if you have done the error yesterday, today there is correction for you. Depend on God for everything. Depend on God for everything. They are pending your miracle in the form of your promotion in the office. Speak to God. Ask God's will. They are, de they are delaying a miracle that's supposed to be yours. Somebody wants to snap that we belong to you. No, 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 it's not possible. Because when you wait on God, God releases angels to take charge. Whatever condition you are in, whatever situation you are facing, God has released angels to take charge over you. I said God has released angels to take charge over you. And the devil can't do anything about it. Now, can I tell you something? Write it in your bedroom. Write it in your, in your, your book. Write it in your diary. That this month, your miracle will not pass you by. I'm saying it again for those who didn't catch it. I say write it on the wall. If you are renting that house or you sleep there and you, you own that place, write it and put it on the wall. This month is my month of a miracle. I am set for a breakthrough. Listen, even if you didn't fast, you ate throughout. Say, by the anointing on our general overseer and by anointing on Papa as my pastor, I write on my wall that this month, that miracle will not pass me by because I am set for a miracle. If you don't say it, I receive it myself. Because my miracle is coming in August. It's my victory month. The devil can't do anything about it. I am receiving it left to right front center. I am getting everything that belongs to me. I am receiving everything. Everything I'm trusting God for. A new business, a new promotion, a new direction, new dimension, fresh oil, fresh anointing for international ministry. I am believing God and I know it has been given. I will receive it and it shall manifest in the flesh. The next thing I want to talk about waiting on God. Wow. It's when you come in terms coming in terms with our dependence, as I said, the next one, when you depend, in other words, eh? I have, I told you something some time ago, my mother, I know everything, you tell so I, me bomb pair, when you say so, and I'm a bomb pair, and I say, hey, so everything, pray, pray. so I decided to visit her, I visited some time, and I was just pulling her leg, hey, mama, I said, baby, I'm not bomb pair there, ah, so for it, me bomb pair, you, with the only, everything, you say, I'm bomb pair, now, so I put, I added, hey, me bomb pie there. Me bomb pie. You know. So one day I said everything. So, so for, when I'm here, so for no. But me, I'm here, I do, and I'm here, I'm here. For you even to take one step forward. Say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm For you, even your hand, for your body to say that I am thirsty, for your hand to take a glass of water, and even manage to drop it on your tongue. And then you have to say, I'm going to stroke. I'm going to stroke. I'm going to stroke. I'm going to say, 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 I'm going then I told her, then I remember, listen, when I was growing ministry, I became so, I mean, a terror to the kingdom of darkness, as is today. I mean, let me tell you how you can identify somebody who carries grace. Anywhere you see a man of God, that is why I told, I, I told my father's reverse the minister and code that, Papa, I'm putting the place in order, you go, come, don't worry. They are telling me, they will come. You see, when you stand a general to a territory, and you don't see reaction in the territory, then that person is not a general. When you send a general to eternity and pastors start fighting, people are not, he cannot be here. It means you are a heavyweight. Ah, there's no place I planted church, they don't fight me. I'm telling you. 
I planted ch my church. We will put posters. They are here. The people go and speak blah, blah, speak go blah. Some of my boys are here. When the ah, altar conference, they will go and speak blah on my poster. Some will tear it. We will go and plant. They will tear it. Sometimes when we are having the conference, you see awkward people in community five. They will come and be wearing black, black and standing across the street. For them, they are not once, not twice, not thrice. I've seen people who are, I mean, physically, they cross me at First Baptist Church, committed to five traffic, branching through. They cross me and want me to stay away from them. Otherwise, they will end my life. I didn't tell my wife. I called one of my father. He said, Don't tell anybody. Because if you tell them, they will be traumatized. So keep it. I said, How, how can I keep this? I'll pray for you. And pray phone prayers. Listen. If there is no move, moving and shaking, wherever you work and people don't think about it, when you are even off, they don't remember you, then you need, you need this grace this morning. You must be a mover and shaker. That why you don't come to work, why are we? Everybody, why, why are you? Where are you? Are you not in work? You need that grace. Cantonment, if he cantonment, they were fighting me. Cantonment, cantonment, that is a strictly residential. And listen, they don't understand where I, I plant churches as a strategic place. They can see to go and plant. I'm not going for my own people. My own people. Somebody walked me and said, Ah, but you cry, what kind of eye do you have? What kind of spirit? Where they think cantonment, where we planted the church, it's a guest house. And it is sharing war with the minister of defense, military, military, his house. So the men were always there around the place. And Sunday we fire the place and shake the place. And none of the military officers can dare come to me and say you are making noise. Very soon, you know what move? What move up is that? The hotel man said, "Yeah, go, my Juma," because I will stand at the entrance when you are coming. Say, God loves you. Let that girl go, Abigail. <laughs> and that was a corner, corner area for ministers bringing small, small girls. By my presence, I stopped them and won some of them to the church. So the management said, We can't have you here anymore because who go here, Juma? Juma, go to that. Hallelujah. 31st night. He said, We can't have 31st night here. Mba. Mba, no. Mm -mm. You won't do it here. I said, We'll do it here. It's going to be our first. But my friend, who is my district pastor, Mr. Smith, Pastor Smith, Reverend Smith came. He talked, talked one hour. When people are starting opening prayer, and people are trooping, cars are trooping. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. I said, That demon in your head, leave you now. You will do church. He said, Okay. Finally, he agreed. He said, When you do church, first and they don't come here. First and uh, one of my daughters. Who is into estate houses? He said, Papa, I have a hall who, that can take about 60 people or so. I said, No problem, give us your hall. Then my son David will go early in the morning at dawn. He will arrange, and it was doubled up as an office. So, Monday to Friday, we we're not doing midweek services. It was Sunday, and it was the first Sunday in a year. I have not told members where we are going, but I declare we are having first Sunday church. When you have been told to your face that tonight is your last night. Somebody say total dependence on God. The reason why, let me speak to the camera, whatever you are watching. The reason why pastors are failing. The reason why the church is being mocked today. That pastors and leaders are not depending totally on God. They are depending on titles, money, structure. We will do service when I don't know. Pastor Smith said, So for you do service. I believe in your grace. We will do service. Then my daughter said, Home. That can take about 60 people. So we have to go there when the people close work on Friday to move their things to a small room, arrange chairs. And the first Sunday we arrange chairs and outside. We're not having TV screens to extend and whatever. It was a somebody hall, hall. So when I preach a minister, I walk to the compound. People were not having seat to see, so they were standing. I said, Jesus stand, so stand. And it took us for so many, I think about a month or two or so. 
It got to a point. I mean, the person that my daughter has given the place to was harassing her, but she couldn't tell me. She would tell us, you know, the man said, the man said, so we have to move. Somebody say total dependent. The fact that your situation look ugly is not the end of your destiny. So far as things are not moving the way you expected, it's not the end of your destiny. I came to speak to somebody that because you waited, strength is available. Tell somebody strength is available. By now you should understand the strength I'm talking about. Not canal strength, but the ability to move forward when all other things you cannot go forward. If I were you, I'm, 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 listen, people don't understand. When you are working the place, why is everybody attacking me? Why is everybody in there? Well, listen, I have, let me say that now I'm doing two, two things, even three or even four. I'm a pastor, I, I'm, a, I'm in academia, I work Monday to Friday. I should have taken my vice chancellor somewhere today, but the, the timing was next month. I wouldn't have been in church. You are working, you are preaching. You are fathering, you are a, a parent, you are doing so many things. You are a husband too. No, a husband is a singular power. It, it, it's a different work, job, job, job altogether. Before you are a family man, it's also a different job altogether. Hey, my God. No, no, should I go further? If you are a husband, you belong, you being a husband means you belong to your wife. You must make sure you satisfy her. Her pawns and everything. You want her to have shape. Make sure you trim her with your own money. So you are you are an institution to a woman for one one. Then after that, you come to general ministry of general information and general. Then your children too. You are a father. You are a, 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 are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't don't pretend as if you don't understand. Those who are married or those who are coming to marry. Because when you marry a woman, first you belong to her. Ah, have you to be there for when the first baby comes, fathers are always jealous. When first baby, God, whatever you enjoy, the baby is coming to take over. I won't go further. So your own child, you'll be doing, you'll be chuckling. you chuckle, you mama, you spatter, you do everything. But I want to be important because you have to love. And sometimes, when she has taken your position, you daddy, you're going to fast and so on. So you have to respond. I'm saying it. So doing all these things, being a husband to your wife, being a father to your children, being a breadwinner, and then a pastor, they are sucking you, sucking you there. My, my, my issue is terrible. That's why I don't need to, to gossip and mm, mm, pray for me. My workload is serious. So now when I'm praying, oh man, 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 oh man, 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 Lord, satisfy my wife where I cannot sacrifice. Let your strength overshadow that. Let her feel fine. Even though she may think it is me, it's not me. Holy Ghost, work it, work it, work it, work it. So I finished praying that. I said, oh Lord, my children, their school fees provide money. They are feeding Lord. When I finish, I say, oh God, my children, spiritual children, feed them. If they are 200, imagine. If they are thousand, imagine. Those who even love me, I have not come into even her space. Those who are watching live, I have congregation. So Lord, feed them. I bind every demon. You, your demon is 20. You alone. Then when, when your family's demons start frustrating you, maybe that is 30, adding to 20, you alone. Before your children's frustrating demons, which cast much, much more. So I am breaking yours, breaking your children. And if care is not taking you, add your mother. Papa, my mother is sick. My father, I break generational curses. One person, one person. That is why I need the strength of the Lord. That is why I need the strength of the Lord. And my second lies in this creature. In the time you are frustrated, don't listen, don't allow any man to frustrate you. Don't allow human beings to frustrate you because if you depend on it, they will kill you. But let your strength be in the Lord. Let that weight upon the Lord shall renew strength. That strength is supernatural capabilities that mere man cannot give you. The strength that you are able to submit the flesh and take control in the spirit and your decisions is what will work. Why? Because may three or potent be. 
Obotai need the erati. So you receive strength from the obotai. When you are weak, your joints are feeble. That you see yourself falling. You cannot fall. Because there is a supernatural obotai. There is a strength you have laid on. Today, can I say this and close? If you are depending on man, may that be replaced with the strength of the Lord. You will move forward. You will take territories. Because the strength of the Lord shall be your portion. Somebody say yes. Shall yes. Shall fire. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The reason why you are not making impact. Because you are dependent on the flesh for too long. Look at the work I'm doing. They are not adding to my salary. They are telling Nothing is happening. The boss I work for just yesterday wrote Popota. Did this, did that. Look at me and insulted me. You got to work happy. You return with sad face. Weak. Can I tell you something? And I'm closing on this. Your boss can decide to take his job from you, but not what is inside of you. Can I tell you something? Many of us have not discovered what we carry. If you have discovered what you carry, no human being can frustrate you. I'm closing with this. Do you know why they hide you? 200 and some, and you say, oh God, God give them this understanding. 200 and some, something went for interview. You alone were, were, was taken. Do you know why? You carry something the rest don't carry. And you know, that should rather give you some confidence to match up with your people over there. And then when they are giving you condition, you receive with the confidence that what you are giving me is not enough, but I am in I accept you for the few six months. Give me six months. I want to throw a challenge with you. Give me six months and you change this salary. We agree. You say yes. Then you start shooting. If they don't need you, they won't hire you. But you see what the devil has planted in the mind of a black man. And I'm not getting a job. So when you go to interview and they ask you, how, how much do you worth? So whatever you will give me, that's a foolish cross. That is, that is, that is, that is, my friend. And then they ask you, say, hey, what is age? And do you know that what the devil has planted in your mind? Hey, if I go and say something and so much, don't give me the job. You know, they, 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 they don't give me the job. And the Lord, and you know, sometimes God stands here when, when you come in, pray to give testimony. Say, I've got in your job, and I ask your qualification. I see the money you are getting. I say, Papa, you know, there's no job, there's no job, there's no job. You don't know what to carry. Listen, I have worked with bosses, and I've seen people resign, and they brought new people, and they insult them and say, Ah, Kweku is better than this one. Kweku left. You don't believe in yourself. You are worth millions. You collect CDs. Papa, I can't cry. It's a, it's a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone. I need, I need a stepping stone. Are, are you a blind man? I am stepping on something. The Lord will give me the bigger one. Let me ask this one. It's better than nothing. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not better. But when you go in one month, two months, three months, and the boss is frustrating you for everything, for that thousand three is giving you, and you are what? Look for somewhere else. Hey, Papa, don't worry. Papa, this one is preaching you. You don't know. I know. <laughs> Papa, oh, Papa, this one is prophetic talk. Please, I know. Remember, I am working. I depend on my salary. I have been there before. When I work for university, and there's no money. And we have to go and do marketing and go around and get for, look for money. Because fresh. And when it was Christmas, they gave us 40 CD, 40 CD, 40 CD. <laughs> no, please. You know, about that time, you don't have a degree. I have two bachelors by then. Two. Bachelor of Theology. The business I have two. two. 40 CD. 50 kilo. 50 kilos of rice, 50 kilos. That, that day, eh? <laughs> upon using all my grace to become a chaplain at the same university and all that. And five kilos of rice, five kilos. Five kilos. One thing I thank God and I left, 
Not that I thank God because I'm happy for 40 CD and 5 kilo. I thank God that time, Grandma, me worry. And that day I was doing that, yes. We will do 100 or 101 or 001. If you don't understand, maybe you didn't go to the university. If you go to the university, how many of you are in secondary school? You know, this service, we don't do it. The university is the champion. That's why they call you a university. You are a graduate. Yes. 101 means you eat in the morning. You don't eat in the afternoon. You eat in the evening. That is even half, even two city. So one city soaking. And then you don't eat it at 8 a.m. You don't eat at 9 a.m. You are a fully student to eat at 9 a.m. You will eat around 10, 30, 11, thereabouts. So by the time you drink water, gua, it's 12 o'clock. And then you trust God in tongue speaking. If you have not, you know, most of the young men like Obed and Co., they learn how to pray hours because of 010. 110. <laughs> one, one, yes. And not only them, I also did the same. Part of my anointing, the disciplines to fast, is 100, 110, or 101, or 000. <laughs> yes, but we trusted God for strength. And I'm telling you on this, please, don't allow anybody to talk to you anyhow. Because he's paying you. Yes. And I'm thanking God. I thank God for lies who believe. And you see, in Africa here, in our nation here, when you are bold, they say you are arrogant. When you are bold, they say you are proud. They don't know what they are talking about. Listen to me. I stand here and pray to you. Or like a canned beef. When we're young, is it canned beef they call it? Huh? I didn't say that. I said canned. Am I speaking the right English? Because I was not raised from East Legon. I was here from Labadi, Nima Labadi. It was your combis. Combis. <laughs> Ignorance is a disease. Oh. Corner beef, yes. Corner beef. And nobody corrected us. Oh, you're poor, I know. Hey, may you never be poor. I refuse. In fact, I don't, I don't pass that poor people. If you are poor, I have to put you in the Olong Kao Burugma of Anointing on here. I don't pass that poor people. Hey, when we were in Kenya, Eradi, every Sunday you have to have money in your pocket. I said, what kind of this one? I closed all my, my wardrobe. But he said, hey, then what are you wearing? I was left with three clothes and all that. You are not a poor person. Rise up on your feet.